Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. This is another video on interview questions and answer series on clock domain crossing. Already we have discussed many interesting and important interview questions on clock domain crossing. And in this video we have come up with something new. And now without wasting much time, let us get started and see what is inside this video. Friends, in our previous video, we have discussed in depth the design of a reset synchronizer and we have understood very well that why a data synchronizer cannot be used as a reset synchronizer. Here we understand two points. When we apply reset to the design, it should be applied asynchronous to the clock. Whether the clock is available or not available, our design should go into a reset state. That is called reset assertion in an asynchronous mode. But as soon as we deassert our reset, here are some limitations if we apply asynchronous to the clock because our design can go into a metastable state. To avoid so, we synchronize our reset with the clock before applying it to the design. And with the help of this synchronizer, the metastability problem that could arise in our design is avoided. And that is what is a reset synchronizer. And in the previous videos, we have discussed the RTL design of this research synchronizer also. But in this video, we are going to discuss something very important. And that, that feature of research synchronizer is called pulse stretching. Friends, it is not enough from the research synchronizer that it is able to synchronize a research signal. Another important expectation from a research synchronizer is pulse stretching as soon as it is deasserted. As soon as the reset is deasserted, we should not immediately deassert our reset. But instead of that, I should stretch it for some minimum time. The question arises, why do we need to stretch my reset pulse? Because there are some designs which consist of follower flip-flops, five force memories. They, they need our reset pulse to be applied for a long amount of time. So that is why reset pulse stretching is very, very important. In, and in some chips, the reset pulse stretching should be in a millisecond range, 2 millisecond, 3 millisecond, or in some chips we have seen that reset stretching even goes higher. Friends, now I am going to ask you my question. And the question is, you have to design a reset synchronizer. We should be able to stretch my reset pulse by 32 clock cycles after its deassertion. And you also have to write the RTL code for it. And now you can pause my video here, try to think of its answer. If you come to know its answer, please write it down in the comment section and we can discuss it there. Otherwise, I'm going to reveal it. Friends, the design of reset synchronizer which can stretch the input reset pulse by 32 clock cycles is shown on your screen. Here, as soon as the input reset pulse is applied, all the flip-flops go into a reset state and their output will become zero. So this zero will be applied to our main design, which will lead to the reset of the entire design. But as soon as it is deasserted, then this logic one at its input start traveling towards the output of this reset synchronizer. And there are 32 flip flops in the chain. So it will take 32 clock cycles to reach at the end of the chain, which is the last flip flop, flip flop 32. And then it gets applied to the, to the main design. So that is how we are able to stretch my reset pulse after its deassertion by 32 clock cycles. Here someone can raise a question that if my input pulse is long enough, then why do I need to stretch it? But in some cases, this input pulse can be very small also, maybe one clock cycle pulse only. In that case, my reset synchronizer will stretch it enough so that it is compatible with my design. Friends, I hope that I could answer my question. And now let us move towards the RTL code. This is the very low code of reset synchronizer which has a capability to stretch reset pulse by 32 clock cycles. Module is reset underscore sync. Input is i reset 10 and clock and out is reset 10 which is applied to our main design. Here I am including a 32 bit register i underscore rstn underscore ff. Always at the rate positive edge of the clock, negative of the i reset n. Whenever reset is asserted, all the bits in the register i reset and ff will be zero. And I'm applying LSB of this register to my main design, which is RSTN. 
else when the set is deasserted i underscore r s t n underscore f f will be equal to concatenation of one one is applied to the msb as i have shown in the diagram also and the remaining bits are shifted towards the lsb side so 31 down to one bits are shifted towards the lsb side that is 30 down to zero friends this is how we write the rtl code of a reset synchronizer having capability to stretch the reset pulse and with this i'm going to end this session i hope that it will be quite informative and interesting for all of you if you also like this video please press the like button and share your feedback in the comment section and in future also we are going to create many such videos so to be aligned with our channel don't forget to subscribe it and press the bell icon to get the notification of all the upcoming videos thank you so much for watching